In this video, we're going to learn how to set proper volume levels and create a balanced mix. This is one of the most important things in mixing. If you do anything else correctly, just try to get a proper volume balance. This is something that people who are new to mixing often overlook. They get distracted with all the other mixing things and thinking those are really important. But if you achieve a proper volume balance, your mixes will sound way better than the rest. So let's dive in and see how this works. As we've been working in the course, we remember that we've been adjusting the track volumes with these sliders over here. Real quick, let's get out of automation mode by clicking the automation button. If you ever want to set the volume back to its default value of zero, you can just double click that and that will set that back to zero. Now there's another mixer view in Ableton that we can access by clicking down here. This will show the mixer view, and if we click this triangle next to it, this will show a lot of other view options. So right now, I'm going to remove the sense control and also the input and output view. So now we can see all of our track volumes for this set, and we can start mixing. So notice that if I adjust the track volume here, I'm also adjusting it here. So this is the same control. This is also the same if you were to hit tab and go to the session view, we can access all of our mixing controls here. So we're gonna mix in the arrangement view. Let's look at our kick here and set our first level. So the best way to think about mixing and setting levels is that we're making a pot of soup. All of our individual elements in our track make up this pot of soup. So we have our kick, our mood, our 808, our hi-hat, we have all of these different tracks and these are our different ingredients in our mix or in our soup. So everything mixes together at the main track here. I can make this track larger by clicking and dragging it. So this essentially is our pot of soup. So right now I'm gonna play this. It's gonna be rather loud, so go ahead and adjust your volume level of your headphones down, but we're gonna hear how this is sort of distorted and too loud with all the levels just at zero. So you can hear how it's distorted, it's hitting into the red here, which is known as clipping, and that's just no good and it sounds really bad. So we need to adjust the volume levels so this sounds good. So just like the pot of soup example, when we're mixing, we only have so much room in the mix that we can put things. We only have so much room in this delicious pot of soup that we're making, so we have to choose how much of each ingredient we put in. So when you start mixing, you want to pick some element that you can start building the mix from. Typically for me, I build the mix from the kick drum, but if you have vocals in your track, you might choose to mix from the vocals. Typically, you're, you're focusing the mix around one of the most important elements to start with. So let's start with the kick here. So before I do that, I'm going to turn off all of the track activators for my other tracks so we just hear the kick drum we could see over on the main track that the level's already hitting zero here. So going back to the pot of soup analogy, we basically don't have any room for any other ingredients, so we need to turn this down. So a good starting point for mixing is setting your kick to where it hits negative 12 on the main track here. So when we turn the kick down negative 12, this gives us what is known as headroom in the mix. Headroom is essentially the amount of available volume that you have in the mix before hitting zero here at the top before clipping. So when we turn our kick down negative 12, we now get some headroom in our mix. So we have space before we hit zero here. And this is going to allow us to add other sounds because when we start to add other sounds, the overall level is going to go up. So let's go ahead and bring in our clap sound next. So let's grab our clap number five here and drag it over. So something that's really helpful when setting levels is to make adjustments in increments of three to start. And the reason for this is if you just slowly adjust the volume level, your ear is constantly adapting to that change. So you'll think, oh, that sounds good. Oh, that sounds good. As you're moving the volume fader up and down slowly, 
But when you move in increments of three, you get this jump so you can hear more of a change. So I recommend go in jumps of three, and then when you find that, if you need to make smaller adjustments, you can do that. So let's try that with the clap here. Let's type negative three, and we'll keep adjusting it down in increments of three. And it sounds pretty good there at negative 12. I find a lot of times having that main kick and that main clap or snare at the same volume level usually is a really good starting point for the mix. I'm going to go ahead and adjust this one more dB by using the down arrow to negative 13. I typically like to have the clap a little bit underneath the kick. So with mixing this hi-hat, I'm going to show you a technique for finding the range of volume that it can be in. There's no exact or perfect volume level, and you'll find that you often change volume levels throughout the entire mix. So the technique for this is we're going to play the kick and the clap, and I'm going to slowly bring this up, and then I'm going to find the point where I go, okay, that's definitely too loud, and then I want to find the point that's definitely too quiet. Because what we've done then is we've found this range of volume level that the track can sit at and still sound good in the mix. Then from there it's up to you to choose subjectively, do I want this sound to be a little more upfront or a little bit more behind the other sounds. Too loud. Too quiet. So often when we're setting levels, we tend to focus on the sound itself, this hi-hat, for example. But really, we need to focus on the perspective of this sound to the other sounds. So now try setting the hi-hat while gaining a perspective of it against the clap. So you can say, do I want this hi-hat to be a little bit louder than the clap, or do I want it to be a little bit quieter than the clap? How does the relationship sound? How is the perspective between the two of them? Okay, so now let's grab our low percussion sound here and turn on the track activator. Because this is a low percussion sound, I'm going to mix it against the kick drum. So we might solo the kick and solo this percussion sound. So now I don't want this percussion sound to overpower the kick because the kick is the main beat. It's the driving force. It's the pulse of the song. And so I don't want the, the percussion to overpower this. So Again, I can utilize that technique of jumping in 3 dB increments to find if it's getting too loud or if it's getting too quiet. So let's start at zero and we'll subtract down. So let's play it first and hear where it's at. Okay, so it's definitely way too loud. So I'll jump by six, All right? It's still overpowering the kick. So I'll go down to negative 12. and maybe down to negative 13 there. So it's more of an accent. Again, I want the kick to be the dominant element and I want this low tom percussion sound to just be supporting it. Another way of checking if the level is right is to use the track activator to bring the track in and out. This helps again, give your ear that jump of something turning on so you can go, oh, okay, cool, that's too loud or oh, that sounds good or oh, Sounds really bad. <laughs> and if you're finding this tutorial helpful and want to learn more, this video is actually part of a 10 day Ableton bootcamp course available at sequence1.org. So when you're mixing, use the track activators as mute switches to bring sounds in and out. This is going to help give your ear that jump, that change, that kind of contrasted change, and it's gonna allow you to be able to hear if that sound is popping out of the mix or if it's sitting well in the mix. Okay, let's bring in our bass sound here. So when I mix the bass, I like to solo it up with the kick first. 
Let's go ahead and make an adjustment. We'll drop this down to negative 12 to start. So it's overpowering the kick a little bit. So let's jump down to negative 15. Let's hear it in the whole mix. I'm gonna go up a little bit just because and down on this percussion sound here. And I made that decision because I want the bass to feel a little bit more powerful than this low percussion sound. So now let's bring in this moody pad here. And with this, we're gonna do the same thing we did with the hi-hat. We're gonna bring the level up to a point where we're like, hey, this is too loud. Now let's bring it back down a little bit. Too loud. When you're mixing this, gain that perspective. So I'd be using the bass as a perspective. I'd want this atmospheric sound to sit just above the bass, but sound like they're both a cohesive instrument. And let's try jump down in three, so negative 15. Go up one. Another helpful technique is to solo sounds together. So I'm using command to solo two tracks together to check the balance between those two sounds. And that sounds pretty good. And then we can bring it in and out of the mix to double check it. There's no exact range. We could mix this sound a little bit higher and it would put it a little more forward in the mix. Or if we want it to be more of an atmospheric sound, we can mix the volume down a little bit to kind of push it back in the mix. So let's mix in this last synth here by turning it on. Let's go ahead and start at negative 12 and then we'll adjust in increments of three. Listen and see if you can hear those jumps as it goes up and down. So negative 15 feels a little too quiet. Negative 12 works, but I want this sound, it's, it's our melodic sound in this mix, so I want it to be a little more upfront, so let's go ahead and bring it up to negative nine. Let's check it against the bass and the atmospheric sound here. And so I think it's still being a little overpowered by the atmosphere. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it up to negative six. Now let's check it back with the whole mix. And again, gain the perspective. So we've been mixing a lot of sounds here. So pay attention to now how this synth sounds with say the hi-hat or the clap. Just like in a photo, try to gain that perspective. And I like it at around negative seven here. The drums are slightly bit behind it. And I like that this synth is nice and up front because it's a good focal point for the mix. So finally here we have some atmospheric noise. And we're just gonna mix this really low so it has a little bit of texture in the mix.
Maybe we'll go down one on the synth. So now we know how to mix levels. We can close the mixer view down here. You can always adjust your track levels here. A couple helpful tips, you can always use the arrow keys to move it up or down by one. You can also mute from this area. 